Hey, Jana, thanks for uh, coming over today to talk with us about P55. Now, I know that you're one of the managers on P55, or it's, it's your project, this is your specialty, yeah. uh, and you were nice enough to bring all these boards out. So, mm -hmm. tell me about these four boards, and tell me about the chipset, because it is new, and I know that it's bringing a lot more power, it's bringing quad cores, uh, it's a new socket, it's a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me, who is, who is P55 intended for? Um, and tell me about your four boards here, because I see these two look like extremes, and these two look like mainstream boards, media boards. Yep, exactly. So pretty much, if you remember from last year, when we came out with the Core i7 and the X58 uh, boards, um, we, uh, that was really more of the high-end play. So we wanted to bring it down to the mainstream. And uh, this is what P55 and these uh, core processors are going to be. Um, so we, we're coming out with three different core um, processors, um, two core i7s and then a core i5. Uh, and it's the new socket LGA1156. And uh, first time from Intel is a, a full family of, of products for the socket. So really excited about the four coming out. Okay, on P55, tell me a little bit about this new architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that a lot of stuff is built into the chip instead of being on the board. Uh, there is no Northbridge oh. present in any of these boards. Right. It's kind of missing. Uh, how does the new system work out? Where did it move everything to as far as yeah. the memory controllers and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. So we went from a, a three chip, which Northbridge, Southbridge, and CPU, mm -hmm. down to a two chip. So CPU remains, of course, but we now have something called the PCH, or the Platform Controller Hub, and that's your P55. Express chipset. Um, what we have with the CPU is it's an integrated memory controller as well as the graphic support. So your PCI lanes are coming, or your PCIe lanes are coming from the CPU. Uh, and uh, on the PCH side, you know that's going to take care of all your I/O functions, and we've also incorporated uh, the clock buffers into the chipset as well. So that's all coming from here. Yep, exactly. All right, that cool. One chip. So let me talk to you <clears throat> a little bit about, um, let's say, for the enthusiast, because you guys market these extreme boards with the extreme yes. processors to people that want to overclock. Tell me about overclocking on all these boards, and then tell me a little bit about what's special about the extremes. What, uh, you know, like how many phases of power, how many lanes of PCI Express. I mean, do these media boards also overclock? I mean, are these <laughs> going to be maybe a board for a someone that wants to overclock but's on a big budget? Uh, you know, tell me. Yeah. Tell me a little about that. So. Historically, extreme series pretty much means it's going to be an overclocking board. Uh, and anything that's black um, on these black PCBs is an overclocking board. So these two uh, will be your, your extreme series, very high overclocking. And what we're really excited about is the fact that we finally have brought back a, a micro ATX board. Nice. Um, it's something that we haven't had in many years. Um, you'll actually also be able to get overclocking on this board, so kind of to, to give you the lineup. Uh, this is DP55KG, huh. DP55SB, and then the DP55WG. Right. And so on the WG board, even though it's media series, which we traditionally do not do overclocking on, uh, this board will actually do some overclocking, and it will have some hardware that uh, is able to, uh, to help you with the overclocking. Very cool. Um, so going back to the extreme series, some of the things that we've got here on the overclocking, uh, you've got your, your normal heat sinks that we, uh, we've included. Um, we've also included a neat LED light for your postcodes, mm -hmm. um, a back to BIOS switch, which is really neat because it'll take you into the BIOS without actually resetting your, your uh, CMOS. Yeah, it's not clearing your CMOS, right. exactly. Um, and that will help save you time if you're overclocking. Absolutely. You know. In case you lose your overclock, you don't have to start from scratch. Exactly. Incredible. Okay. So uh, hours of overclocking saved right there. Talk to me about uh, how many PCI Express lanes going to the processor yep. and SLI and Crossfire. Absolutely. I know that the Smack Overboard did not have SLI support. Is that being repeated again on P55? Yeah, so this go around, uh, three boards here will support Crossfire, uh, ATI Crossfire, as well as NVIDIA SLI. Um, the CPU supports 16 lanes of PCIe uh, 2.0, and so you can see that on all three of these boards, you've got the by 16 which is your, uh, you know, your, your card number one, and then we've got a by 8 which we've uh, muxed down, so you can, it automatically bifurcates down when you throw in that second graphics right. card. So automatically does your um, switching 
uh, for you. Um, so that's, that's going to be pretty cool. And uh, you'll be able to choose uh, whatever graphics flavor you like. Hey, what is that for? This guy right here? Yeah. <laughs> so this is the uh, additional SATA power for the PCI Express. Um, and what we've got, mm -hmm. this is kind of an optional extra power. And mm -hmm. it's really just for, um, you know, just in case kind of thing. You know, Intel's really big with, um, you know, wanting to make sure that everything works well for your board, you know, right. all your components. Um, so this is just extra power for your, your PCI Express um, add-in cards. All right, cool. <clears throat> um, tell me a little bit about the IDCC and, you know, basic run of the functionality. I mean, yeah. what, what you're allowed to tell me. Mm -hmm, sure. So uh, IDCC is the Intel Desktop Control Center. Um, we've had this piece of software for almost all our Extreme Series boards for a couple years now. And what we introduced on the DX58SO board, which was the original Core i7 board, mm -hmm. uh, was the ability to over uh, to auto-tune. Uh, and it's a, a single one button. Um, you let it run for as long as um, you know, two minutes to a couple hours, right? And it'll automatically um, set some overclocking, run some stability tests, and then go in and fine tune it uh, automatically for you. That so, sounds incredible. It sounds like an automatic overclock. Yep. So, how does that work? I mean, like, is it just, is it going to overclock itself? realize that it's not stable and then revert back to a lower setting until it finds like a balance? Exactly. That's exactly what it does. It, it really um, will, you know, you, you can set your parameters based on, you know, how high you want the voltage to run or um, I think even on a temperature side, um, if you know that you're using a really good third party cooling solution for your CPU, mm -hmm. um, you can say, I want it to run a little bit hotter right. because I know that I have the correct cooling solution. And then it will actually go in, hit a high level, and if it doesn't, then maybe it will um, bump that subsystem down, maybe increase your frequency for uh, the memory. And then it will kind of go back and forth and seesaw until it uh, finds a really stable and uh, overclocked uh, level for you. Cool, cool. Okay. Anna, tell me about this new chipset, new socket. Uh, tell me about all the new boards. Just give me a rundown, basically, so I know what's going on with P55. Sure. Uh, so with P55, uh, it, it's a whole new chipset for a whole new family of processors that we ha we have coming out. Uh, it's also going to be branded Core i7 as well as a flavor of Core i5, and it's a new socket um, LGA1156. So you can kind of see on the board that we've got uh, a two chip solution. So there's no more north and south bridge. We've only got this one little guy here um, that handles your. I.O. and your clock buffers. And then the CPU actually has the integrated memory uh, controller as well as the PCIe to auto um, controls for the graphics. Um, and so, you know, it's going to be a much, uh, you know, compact, mm -hmm. uh, energy performing. I was looking for the North Bridge big. cooler and I couldn't find yeah. it. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, and so uh, from the motherboard side at Intel, uh, with this, this go around um, on the P55 chipset, we decided we wanted to do a whole family of boards. So you see here, um, the two black boards are the ex Extreme Series, mm -hmm. and then the two blue ones are the Media Series. So just kind of go down the line. Um, this is the DP55KG, mm -hmm. the DP55SB, uh, DP55WG, and then the DP55WB. Uh, like a lot of our viewers pretty much are interested in the Extreme Series. Yep. They like this stuff too, but they're more interested in this. Tell me about some of the overclocking features because uh, 1156 is going to be very overclockable. P45 was a huge overclocker. Yep. Uh, people were using that over X48 even because it seemed to overclock better and they loved it. Is P55 going to continue in that? And as far as Intel's boards go, what type of, you know, what are you helping as far as overclocking goes by yeah. your design? Yeah. So. Uh, these two boards, uh, the KG and the SB boards, are very overclockable. That's what uh, we're really excited about. Um, to kind of start, you see that we've got these heat sinks uh, on the uh, the six VRs here, and uh, you know, you pretty much can count it. It means that we've got a six-phase power right. um, for the VR. And what's really neat about that is uh, we found on the X58 board, the DX58SO, uh, that 
we've found a, an efficient way to balance the thermals across all six um, phases, and that really enabled much more current to go through when you're overclocking. Um, and these, uh, the great thing about these heat sinks is that they're, um, you know, they're very sturdy. They're solid on the board. Um, you know, if you're shipping, you know, you're, you're buying it online, it's getting shipped to you, you know it's going to come, it's not going to pop off right. by accident, that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, uh, some other things we've got, uh, we brought back the LED light for your postcodes. Very nice. Uh, and that's on board on both of them. And we've also got this back to BIOS switch right here on the back here. Um, and the cool thing about the back to BIOS switch is that it isn't a clear CMOS button. It's not. It isn't. It, it, you know, usually you, you're overclocking, you're overclocking, and then something messes up, and you can't seem to get it stable enough to even get into the BIOS. Right. right? So you hit this button, and it'll take you to the BIOS on default, um, but it's not going to reset all those values. Oh my gosh. Um, so what you'll be able to do is, you know, bump down that voltage that you, you hit the last time. Right. And it'll take you back into a more stable level. So you won't lose. lose hours of work. Exactly. That exactly. is awesome. Uh, something else I noticed. What What is this thing over here? Yeah. So that guy. Yeah. So it should actually be on this one as well. This is a pre-production. So it, uh -huh. you won't see it on this guy. It should be right here. Uh -huh. um, what what it is and what it will be is uh, a Bluetooth module that's been integrated on the board. Really? Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll come with, you can see these little um, pikes here, or mm -hmm. spokes here, it'll come with an antenna that you can uh, run to the front of the chassis so you can get really good radio really? signal. Uh, so we'll have the integrated Bluetooth option for your board. I think that's board. the first uh, motherboard Bluetooth, right? Yep. I don't think I've seen one. I haven't seen one. <laughs> that, that's extremely cool. Mm -hmm. um, also, tell me about, I see there's on the, on the uh, smack overboard, you only have six SATAs, right? Yeah, for SO, we only had the six. And so now you have a different one, but that means you had to add another chip. Exactly. So both the X58 and the P55 chipset only supported up to six SATA ports. Right. So we've included another, um, you know, driver to support an additional two SATA ports on the KG board as well as the eSATA going out the back. And these are like a, like a what, Marvel or a J-Micron chip? Yep, they, we use a Marvell uh, mm -hmm. a driver and chip. Cool. That's, that's good. Do you want to mention the uh, light-up skull? Yes. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, another cool feature that we were pretty stoked about on the, the KG board is this uh, cool skull here at the edge of the board. And what's neat about it is on the other side, you can kind of see we've got these little lights here. Oh, yeah, that's um, nice. When you got it plugged in, you got it turned on, it'll actually glow through the board. And uh, the whole traces and the eyes will kind of light up. And you can make <laughs> it, like, glow or blink uh, with, like, the hard drive. Really? Yeah. So How do you control that through the... Uh... You control it through the BIOS. Uh, so you can tell it to be on, off, or so make funny. it blink. Yeah. Very, so, very just cool. Just an extra little bit of flair for you. Speaking of BIOS, yes. uh, have you guys done anything with the BIOSes? Yes. Uh, you know, we, we've continued to make Extreme Series BIOS uh, very overclockable, um, but we actually wanted to make even more. So we really included uh, more features, more options. We tried to make uh, instructions to it a little bit uh, clearer. That's good. Uh, and we've even included much more granularity in um, you know, your voltage settings. Um, and also let you have a, a higher um, voltage ability. So, you know, it's really for the power users, folks that know what they're doing with the a great cooling solution. Right. Um, you'll be able to really hit some some very high. Out of curiosity, do you have any idea how high the voltages can go for V core on the boards like this? I mean, I do you give do you give the options for the people that are gonna like pretty much destroy the board with extreme cooling like liquid nitrogen, or not that far? I know that this I is more. I haven't checked. Yeah. I haven't I checked. Need a, yeah, I've got it. I've got my system built up, but I haven't checked it yet. All right, cool. And then also, I know that you bring in uh, the IDCC, mm -hmm. which was in the Smack Overboard and was even before that yep. in the old X48 boards. And tell me a little bit about that. Have yeah. you made any improvements to that? How does yep. that work now? So the Intel Desktop Control Center, uh, I think, was back in the you know X X38 boards, uh, and it's exclusive to Intel. Uh, what we did was um, for DX58SO, we created this one touch auto tuning capability. So, in the past, all you could do was go in, it would monitor your voltages, your fan speeds, your temperature, 
Now with IDCC, uh, you'll be able to, um, you know, hit that one one button auto tune, and it'll cycle through and overclock your system for you without you doing anything. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Um, do you want to talk about DP fifty five SB? Uh, yeah, kind of did a little bit, but um, so that's this guy. SB is this guy. Why do you? What's you just want to talk about it because it's extreme and micro. Okay, cool. Um, you didn't have one for, oh, I know you didn't have one for X58, and there was not one for 48 either, right? Of micro extreme board? Yeah. This is this is the first micro ATX board extreme. in the extreme that we've had in, I'd say, five or six years. Oh, there used to be one before? Yeah, like way what, back in the day. Prescott or Pennier 4 or something? Yeah. Wow. I, don't, I, I wasn't even in Intel at the time. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so the really cool feature about this one is the fact that it is a micro. Um, you lose some of your expansion slots, but it still runs SLI, uh -huh. uh, and it's great for your, you know, land party rigs, things like that. For you know, portable, yeah, very portable. and still has all the same features as far as everything else goes. Yep, Six exactly. Six-phase power, mm -hmm. back to BIOS, LCD poster. Yep. Yep. So what are you using? PCI. What was that? You're losing a PCI. Yep, you lose two PCIs and a by four. No one uses that anyway, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> that works out very well. Okay, and then um, what's up with the uh, the WG, the DP55 WG? Yep. Exactly. So blue means it's media series, which right. means it has you know everything uh, on the on the audio and, and video wise of mm -hmm. the Extreme Series board. Um, however, this isn't your your main overclocker type of board. Right. But what's new with this media series board is that we did introduce a little bit of overclocking. So the BIOS is overclockable. You'll see it still has the um, back to BIOS button here nice. and the LED for your postcode. Nice. Um, SLI and Crossfire are also available for the board. Okay. Um, so you know it's still going to be a really solid, um, solid board for folks that want to maybe start um, try overclocking. Right. Um, but they may not want to, you know. They're not sure if they want to be an enthusiast and overclock, but they do want to have a gaming rig so they can start with SLI or one card and then SLI and then get into overclocking. They're exactly. not limited to not overclocking. Mm -hmm. And then what about this board? This is the same deal but micro again? Uh, actually, this board we, we've really pulled out. We've almost stripped this down. Um, what we want to do with, a, with this board was uh, have an option for folks that wanted to get onto Core i7 and Core i5. Um, but wanted a, a more price, gotcha. you know, sensitive type of, of Get system. Get some the high quality processor, the fast speeds, but mm -hmm. in a budget price without all the extra stuff they're not going to use. So they still have PX, uh, PCI Express 2.0. Is yes. that X16? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is your by 16. Uh -huh. um, doesn't do dual graphics, right. but uh, you know you'll get the the great performance of the uh, the latest processor, um, and it still has, of course, your your four DIMMs of of, uh, of memory for DDR3. Right. Uh, you know, and all the support of USB RAID um, 1390 or 19, 1394, mm -hmm. 1394, uh, all the support that you'll get from the other boards as well. Right. Just cut down in price. Yep. Uh, one more question back over here. Mm -hmm. uh, memory, native support, how fast? Yes. Uh, so the chips, or, I'm sorry, the CPU mm -hmm. on the support side is 1333, uh -huh. um, but these three boards, because of the overclocking capabilities, um, we are claiming 1,600 or more. Right. Um, and I think our engineers internally, um, and this is for you, but engineers internally has gotten it up to like 21, 2,400. Right. Like they've gotten it pretty. So, high but up. if you pop in a 1,600 megahertz DIM mm -hmm. and you select XMP, it'll automatically run at absolutely. the right latencies. Yep, absolutely. Right. That's what I consider to be native. You pop it in with nothing more than a click, it'll run yep. there. Yep, absolutely. All right, cool. Yep. So native Very 1,600. Cool and then everything else is gravy. Awesome, and uh, new box. New box. Had some um, in, did you have some input on that? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so we wanted to, um, from the, I think it was X48, DX48 BT2, mm -hmm. we started incorporating this new skull. Skull, yeah. And so we wanted to kind of update the skull, and, and I apologize that it's all beat up. Sorry. Um, shipping is not as friendly as I thought it would be. And uh, so we've got the new Skull logo, we've got our new badges, as you started seeing mm -hmm. already. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to get some more information at your, your local oh, retail yeah, stores that get you some more details. But um, we're pretty pretty stoked about the new Skull logo here. Good job, good job. Hey, <clears throat> thank you very much for coming out and talking yeah. to us. Thank you for Appreciate having me. Appreciate it, Anna. Um,